Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about um, section 5.2. Um, this is going to be properties of a quadratic in standard form. So in the last video we looked at it more in vertex form. Um, so a reminder what standard form is, it looks like this. ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, and so kind of what we need to know is how things are influenced. Okay, so up or down. Um, if A is positive, it's going to open up. So it's still a parabola, so it's going to look like this. And if A is negative, it opens down. Okay, and remember A is still that vertical stretch factor, so that's where we could do the 1, 3, 5 to get more points. Okay, now the hard part about when it's in this form is that we can't see the vertex right away. So we have this um, helpful tool that's going to help us find that. So the first thing is find the axis of symmetry. So axis of symmetry is what splits the parabola right down the middle. And we find that by doing negative b divided by 2a. And b is coming from that coefficient in front of x. a is the coefficient in front of x squared. Okay, it's always going to be a vertical line, and it always will go through the vertex. So whatever this is, is the x-coordinate of the vertex. So negative b over 2a is the x-coordinate. To get the y-coordinate, we have to plug it in. So I'm going to use function notation. We're going to find what is y when x is negative b over 2a. Okay, so let's try that maybe on this example here, you guys. So here, I want to find... The axis of symmetry first. So we're going to x equals negative b, so negative negative 2, over 2, and a is just 1 in front of x squared. So then I just simplify. Negative negative 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So x equals 1 is our axis of symmetry. And we always want to put the x equals in there because that's how we write the equation of a vertical line. Now the vertex we know half of it. We know the x-coordinate is 1. We have to find the y-coordinate. So here's what we do. We find, we plug in 1 for every single x. We want to know what is y when x is 1. So we do 1 squared minus 2 times 1 plus 4. 1 squared is 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 plus 4 is 3. So when x equals 1, y is 3. So in standard form, we got to do this process to find the vertex, okay? The y-intercept is where x is 0. So I'm just going to use actually this previous equation and plug in 0 for x. So the other thing, because x is in these first two terms, it's actually always going to be c. So in this case, my y-intercept is 0, 4. But when it's in standard form, it's always C. Okay? All right. Domain for any quadratic is all reals. It's going to go left to right both directions. For the range, we have to look at the graph. So find vertex is really what we want to look for. Okay? So here, my vertex is right there. So it's opening up, so that's the lowest y value it's going to hit. So I want to look at the y value that goes with it, and it's 3. So it starts at 3, and then it goes up forever. When it opens down, negative infinity is going to be the leftmost value, or the low, lowest value. And the highest y value it gets to on this one is, that's a negative 5, I believe, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. And because our vertex is sitting on that value, that's why I'm using brackets there. Okay, so the vertices, we can also look at them. They're a maximum or a minimum of the function. So if it opens up, that's when we have a minimum. So that's when A, remember, is positive, okay? Maximum, like in this case, is when it opens down. So that's when the a value is less than zero or it's negative, okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and graph and identify all these different parts. So the first thing I look at is a. If it's positive or negative, that tells me how it opens. So because it's negative, it's going to open down, which also 
means it's a maximum, right? If it opens down, it has a point at the top, okay? All right, next we're gonna find the axis of symmetry. So remember that's negative B over 2A. So I'm plugging in those values, okay? And then I simplify. So negative 6 divided by negative 12, <laughs> I said that backwards. Negative 12 divided by a negative 6 is a positive 2. So x equals 2 is the axis of symmetry. What I like to do too is I like to draw myself a dotted line where the axis of symmetry is. So that lets me know my parabola has to be centered on that axis of symmetry. So we already know half of the vertex. We know it's 2 something. So to get the other half, we are going to find what is f of 2. So we're plugging in 2 for every single x and then simplifying. So two squared is four, four times negative three, negative 12, plus 24 minus one, 12 minus one is 11, I believe there. Okay, let's see if I got enough space here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, we sure do. So two 11 is the vertex. And this is gonna open down, so I got room for the other points. So let's finish answering some questions here. So y-intercept, remember, when it's in standard form is always c. So c is that constant on the end. So y-intercept always x is 0, and the constant on the end is negative 1. Domain for all quadratics is all reals. And range, remember, we have to look at the graph. So let's go ahead and finish the graph. OK, um, so we're going to use a times 1, 3, 5. So our a was negative 3. Okay, multiplying by our 1, 3, 5 pattern, we got negative 3, negative 9, negative 15. So we're going to go down 3 and over 1, and then down 9 and over 1. 1, 2, 3, oh, lost my spot. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, and over 1. I forgot the over 1. Okay, so we went down 3 and over 1, then down 9 and over 1. We could go down 15 and over 1 to get one more, but remember, we want to have a minimum of 5 points. We also knew the y-intercept was at 0, negative 1, so that should um, be a reflection of the other point. So you can also use the y-intercept to get a, another point. And there is our graph. So now we can answer the range questions. So because it's opening down, it has a low value of negative infinity, and the highest it gets to is that y-value of 11, where the vertex is. Oh, and use brackets because we have a point sitting... On 11. So our maximum or minimum value, I like to put the ordered pair here, you guys, but typically it's asking what is the maximum value. That's a y value. Um, but I'm just going to put the ordered pair, which is going to always be the same as our vertex. Okay. But, or you can answer it like this, um, or max of 11 when x equals 2. Okay. All right, let's try this one, okay? This one, my a value is positive, so it's going to open up, which means it has a minimum, okay? Axis of symmetry, negative b over 2 times a. So we get positive 2 over 1, which is 2. So this one has actually the same one as up above. So it's got to be centered on that axis of symmetry. Vertex, we're going to find f of 2 to get the y-coordinate. So 1 half of 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus 2. Lots of 2s. 2 squared is 4. Half of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 minus 4, negative 2, plus 2 is 0. So negative 2, 0 is our uh, vertex. Y-intercept is C, so 0, 2. So I could also put that on the graph. 0, 2. And I can actually reflect that one over as well, you guys, to get another point. Domain, we know. All reals. Range, we got to find. We know it's opening up, so we could say it's going to end at positive infinity, and it's going to Start at its vertex, right? And the low point of the vertex is when y equals 0. All right. 
Okay, so to get all my points, we're going to do 1 half times 1, 3, 5. 1 half times 1 is 1 half. 1 half times 3 is 1 and a half. 1 half of 5 is 2 and a half. Okay, so to get these points, we already have one on here, but I'm going to use my pattern. So up a half and over 1, and up 1 and a half and over 1. That's the point that's already there. And then up 2 and a half and over 1. We'll go ahead and put one more on there. All right, so this one's a little bit fatter because that A is one half, so it's vertically compressing our graph. Okay, all right, a couple more here, guys. So if A is, and this is absolute value, so the positive doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, but if it's less than one, um, the graph is going to be wider than the parent function because it's a vertical compression. So this is something like one half, one third, one fourth. If A is greater than 1, then the graph is uh, skinnier. Or thinner, okay, than the parent function, okay? Now, let's say that we're given it in vertex form and we want to convert it to standard form. Pretty easy. We're actually just going to distribute this, expand using order of operations. So I'm going to square this guy first. So remember, that means x plus 3 times itself. So when I square this, okay, I get x squared plus 3x plus another 3x plus 9. Okay, combining like terms, I have 2 times x squared plus 6x plus 9. Multiply everything by 2, and now I can do the 18 minus 4 here, so I have 2x squared plus 12x plus 14. So this would be that same quadratic in standard form, and here it is in vertex form. So that's representing the same function. All right, guys, um, that is all for this section. Thanks for watching.